Hello, welcome to Talking Game. It's match P of Aston Villa against West Ham United. Kick off on Sunday at 4.30. Gonzo, let's start as always. Can I get your thoughts on our opponents, please? Yeah, um, well, as a club, Aston Villa are a, are a proper football club. Um, former European champions, of course. One of, one of the biggest, uh, most authentic and proper football clubs. There is, I'm, I'm always funny, I always think of Aston Villa. I don't know why, it's funny. I always consider Aston Villa and um, and Everton and sort of Sheffield Wednesday, but big, just big clubs with traditionally big fan bases and, and good stadiums. I, I couldn't tell you what Hills was like now. Um, but and, and Leeds as well is another one. It, it's just not in big, Forest. Not not so much. Not so much. Oh, good heritage, yeah. not in Forest, but a, a smaller fan base, but a great club, not in Forest. But yeah, Aston Villa, <laughs> a proper football club. Um Really like them, actually, to be honest with you, Gia. Uh, not, not so great in the last few games, though. Yeah, I like them as well. I think they're a good club. I've got nothing against them. I wouldn't say I have a soft spot for them. I just They don't bother me at all, and I don't mind them seeing... I don't mind seeing them have success. Uh, not that they've had too much in recent <laughs> no, years. Don't, don't mind it because I don't have any recently. <laughs> yeah. But I sort of wish them well kind of thing. Uh, I do wish them well, and I don't like to see them struggle kind of thing. And... They've probably been the most disappointing team in the Premier League for me so far this season. A lot of people would pick Leeds United, but for myself, it is it's it's Aston Villa actually. I think um, Dean Smith's got to be under pressure for me. He's got to be under pressure now. He's got to. He's not doing good enough. He's not doing good enough. Aston Villa against Friday on Friday they played Arsenal was one of the worst performances I've seen from a Premier League team. What I have seen. This season, it wasn't quite Watford's two weeks previous, but it was up there. They were just ridiculously bad in the first 45 minutes, and it looked like strangers playing together. Dean Smith looked lost on the touchline, and it's not good because if he's, I expect us to win the game. Spoiler, I'm going to predict a West Ham win for this one, and Dean Smith's part of that reason. I, I am. Um, I'm you know, I feel confident going into games because of West Ham at the minute, but I also feel confident playing at Aston Villa right now because of Aston Villa and because of Dean Smith. I feared Brentford. I don't fear Aston Villa on Sunday. Now, those words might come back to haunt me. But it's Dean Smith. He, he's just not good enough as far as I'm concerned. And this isn't... I don't like to call teams a one-man team, Conzo. I don't like doing it. I don't like to say it was all Jack Grealish. But he struggled without him. And it's not just this season. It goes back to last season as well. When Grealish was out, he didn't know what to do. They were struggling. Villa were struggling. They barely picked up any points without Jack Grealish. And I think part of the reason I'm almost like worked up about it a little bit is because I think, A, they're a good club. B, they've got ambitious owners. They've spent a lot of money at Aston Villa. It's not like there's no money to spend kind of thing. And C, I actually thought, Recruitment-wise, in terms of replacing Jack Grealish in the summer, I thought they did all right. I thought the business they did was quite good, Gonzo. I actually thought, okay, I can see your plan here. The chief executive or whoever it was come out and explain why Grealish left, explain what, why they've spent the money the way they have. And I thought it made sense. And I thought, fair play for coming out and speaking to your fans. And you know what? I get it. I get what you've done. But it's not worked. No, it's not worked, and it's a hell of a thing to lose your best player. And they, they do have my sympathy on that. They really do. Um, we can only imagine what, what would happen and what, what will happen when we, we possibly um, lose Declan Rice. But he was a massive part of, of not only what they did in the Premier League, and at times in the Premier League, they were swashbuckling as well. Last season, the, the one before they scraped through, I think their last game of the season might have been against us, and they had to... It, or whatever. I think the last game of the season was against us and they weren't sure that they were staying up going into that game. I might have that wrong, but I think that was the case. Um, but he played a big part in getting them promoted as well. And, um, you know, the best player that they've produced uh, probably for a few years there as well. So, um, yeah, I get it. I have massive sympathy. And, and, but I don't... You know, it's not come as a massive surprise to me because I was saying it during the window when everyone was without being funny, holding up Aston Villa as an example of who to follow. And I was saying the videos, I want to say, they've just sold their best player. Don't assume that everyone they're going to bring in is going to hit the ground running. Don't Do not assume that the sum of their component parts of, of Ings and Buendia and Bailey are going to all combine to produce more than Jack Grealish because he was quite phenomenal. Well, he is phenomenal. He's an absolutely fantastic player. And not just... You don't just measure it in the goals and assists Jack Greenish got. It's actually the amount of times he was able to win 
a free kick. Someone else kicks the ball over and then someone else ends it in. Um, that's not Jack Grealish's assist, but I'll tell you what, he's directly responsible for the goal. Um, and I was, I was going to say immeasurable. I've just told you how to measure it. But um, I, I, I get it. I, I understand it. And it is difficult for him now. I'm going to ask you in a minute, Gonzo, if Dean Smith is under pressure. Before I do, I'm going to put the viewers under pressure. I'm going to pressure. put you under pressure <laughs> yeah. to download the One Football app. The link is in the description below. Get it downloaded because, unlike the Aston Villa transfer market, this one will not falter to deceive. It's the best football app for the football fan. Get it downloaded. It says, What's your favorite team? Who do you want to follow? You can click your clarity and blue team, regardless of which team you're supporting on Sunday. And then you go into your team and it's got a streamlined news feed. And I can guarantee you, as a West Ham fan right now, there's a lot of news happening. There's a lot of there's news, a lot news for West Ham fans at the minute. So get it downloaded. And at half past three on Sunday, Gonzo, you get a cheeky little notification from One Football. You will get a notification from One Football. It will tell you both lineups. It will tell you the Aston Villa lineup. It will tell you that West Ham are playing Fabianski in gold. It will tell you that West Ham. And Zuma and Suchek and Rice in the middle with Antonio up front and the other team, which we could go on and predict in a second. Um, it will possibly, if you're an Aston Villa fan, it will probably tell you who's going to be Aston Villa's next manager. Um, but anyway, we'll deal with that an another time. The one football app, it's free, it's free. Download Jack, it. Jack Green, this was 100 million, but this app is completely free. Link in description and the pinned comments. Get downloaded to your phone and you shan't regret it. Dean Smith, Gonzo, I'll, I'll, I'll confess. Um, yeah. well, during, you don't need to confess, you've already slagged him off during the Arsenal game when Arsenal were thumping Aston Villa. Um, so after Steve Bruce, Steve Bruce is no, it was after Steve Bruce had been dismissed anyway. Mm. I put money on Dean Smith to be the next manager gone in the Premier League. I got 25 to 1, thought it was generous. So, was, do you think he's under pressure? Well, I think he's under pressure. I think you, you might you better, better pray that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer gets, um, gets at least a point against Tottenham at the weekend. I think that's who they're playing, possibly. Um, he, he's, he's under pressure. He should be under pressure um, because he was being lauded as the best thing since sliced bread. Um, and if you're quite happy um, to be held as the Messiah when things are going well, you're going to have to accept that you will be um, derided as a very naughty boy when things are going badly. And it's up to him to get a tune out of them. Um, look, I'm not sure what their net spend is, I, I, but it almost doesn't matter. They, I'll tell you what they did do. They were able to spend last season, last season as when they hadn't sold Grealish. So they shouldn't be. I think they've lost their last three games in a row, quite possibly. Uh, they shouldn't be in that sort of run of form. And um, sometimes you see someone coming up on the horizon. You think, oh, we, I don't particularly want that, them as a match now. Them, them as our next game ain't good. But because I'll tell you something, um, Arsenal, Arteta would have been looking and thinking, oh, thank goodness, this Aston Villa coming up. Actually, we, we could do without this to help us out. So give us a leg up. Um, so, yeah, he should be under pressure. Yeah, I agree. I think um, obviously, um, I think the problem he's got is he's got the Ollie Watkins and Danny Ings situation on his hand. He doesn't seem to know how to play both at the same time. He switched to this three at the back formation. It worked for a couple of games. Um, and then he's got to try and get Bruendia in there as well. And he's under pressure to make Ings and Bruendia. Bailey was injured for periods, so he didn't have to worry about him at that point. But he was under pressure to get those two in the team, get them firing in order to justify the money that Villa paid out. And it's not working. Watkins and Ings up front should be a partnership to strike the living fear into any Premier yeah. League defence. You look at how Brentford are doing it with Tony and Mbwemo, they do strike fear into defences, mm. playing three at the back. Villa can't do it for whatever reason. They, they're just not managing it. And Smith needs to go to four at the back again and get a little bit of bollocks about him and either drop Ings or Watkins or play one of them, Watkins, out of position back onto the left where he did play on the left under Dean Smith. Um, ah. But this is where Dean Smith made a rod for his back when they signed Danny Ings. The journalist assumed, said, well, that means Watkins will be moving to the left into Jack Grealish's position to come to Danny Ings. Dean Smith basically said, no, he's not doing that. Watkins will be striker. So now he's almost, because of his own words, he's almost forced to play Watkins up front. Uh, and I think he's, I think he's come stuck. Actually, I, I think the formation just ain't working at Villa. He needs to change it back to four at the back. Um, and I actually thought you were correct so far about the Jack Grealish transfer. I thought Villa handled it perfectly well. A year ago, they dealt with the situation with Jack Grealish, which says hundred million fee. Club player agreed it. Jack Grealish happy. Club was happy. They had twelve months to plan how to replace Jack Grealish. They had a whole year to sit down and think. Right, this is what we're going to do. 
100 million is what we will get. Let's spend it. And on paper, I think it's three very good signs. I think it's three fantastic players. Buendia was probably, if you gave me a blank check for West Ham, said, who do you like the best? I said, I'll have him. Thank you. Danny Ings, yeah, I'll have him as well. Thank you. Um, three fantastic players, but it's just not working at the minute. Um, I think you'd like to add before we talk about players, Jim Mayer? No, I think we're about to. Just quickly, before a Villa fan mentions it, yes, you might be missing John Terry. I don't know. I don't know what John Terry did in the backroom staff. He may be a massive part of Dean Smith's loss of form, if you want to call it that. I'm not convinced because he was crap without Jack Grealish while John Terry was there as well. So, anyway, players in my own. Uh, well, I'd, I'd quite like Bordy. As, as you say, I think he's an absolute tremendous player. A really good, really good player. You know, I like um, Mings. I've, I've always liked Mings. Good leadership qualities. Um, how he is. Uh, I know, yeah, to, to trouble is, Gio, every time you say you don't like Mings, and then he goes on as a, as gets man of the match or something, the game afterwards. Um, you were, I'm surprised you haven't. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm surprised you're not carrying a bit more weight after all that humble pie of him. Um, his first two matches for England when you said he was going to fail um, in the Euros when he was man of the match at least once. Anyway, very good player. Very, he was, he was, he, he was, he was. We even did a review and you said it. So um, as we like to say when we're right, it's it's archived. It's there, my friend. So um, he's a good player. I like him. Um, leader, leader. Really like that. I like Matty Cash. Um, and I thought he might be better as a wing back. But I, th I think not, actually. I, I don't think he's maybe enjoying this formation too much, quite possibly. Um, but again, again, a good player. I like Watkins. They've got a lot of good players. And I'll tell you what, I, I take totally take what you're saying here about, um, about him getting some good players in. I don't deny that all those. We've spoken about Bailey on this channel for the last three or four years about him coming over. He was in Germany, Jamaican international, about him coming over. And, you know, we would have liked him. Um before even St. Maximam came in, you know, it was a case of all well, these two are, are probably the hottest property, property in terms of wingers, up and coming wingers in the in the in a game sort of thing. But it's it's one thing getting these good players in, but if you don't know how to deploy them, you don't know what to do with them, then it's then it's absolutely pointless. And in which case, as good as their planning was that they and I agree with that. The first part of that plan, no, we're only taking a hundred million. Great. The same you have the same with Bright and and the centre back. That bit's fantastic, right? But if you're not gonna do it, we have this. You get Gareth, you get Gareth Bailitis, which is you end up with all this money in your pocket, and you end up wasting stuff and spending thirty six million on Eric Lamella and things like this. You know, you don't you don't invest it properly. I think a better manager would be doing better with Aston Villa. I think on paper, man for man, I think they've got a top eight team there. Their squad. I'd rather have Aston Villa starting 11 than Arsenal starting 11. Currently, man for man, I would. I, I think Emi Martinez is a superb goalkeeper. I think he's the best of the rest, if you want to call that. You've got Mendy, Ederson, Allison up there. Underneath that, I think Emi Martinez is probably the next best goalkeeper. I think Konsa is a fantastic centre-back, far better than Tyro Mings, and he's been dropped. But well, I'll let Gonza have the Mings thing. I think Cash is a decent right back. I think John McGinn is mm -hmm. one of the better centre midfielders in the Premier League. Um, Buendia should be one of the best attacking midfielders in the Premier League. Ings is one of the best goal scorers in the Premier League. That's why when I look at the Villa team, maybe I'm a bit harsh on Dean Smith, but I just see so oh, yeah, much. Go on, go on, go on. Give it, dip, stick. Give him another kick. Give him a kick for a, third, a third time in the studio. There's so much potential in that Villa team. They should be challenging for the top eight, and they should be challenging for silverware. They have to be. You can't spend as much money as they have and settle for staying in the penalty. No, no, no. A better manager would be doing better so far with that Villa team. Dean Smith is... I'm just not convinced by is it. it. I is don't it like because him. are you all right? Is it because sort of Steve Bruce has got sacked now, and you, you are you are you lacking a punch bag, my friends? Is this what it is? Yeah, I didn't like Steve Bruce either. <laughs> well, we know. I was we right know. about Steve Bruce. Look at him. Look, I, what do you mean, look at him? Look, listen, I don't like right backs. You don't like managers. I do like managers, just not Dean Smith or Steve Bruce. Um, They're not the only ones. But anyway, go on. Right, so we move on to West Ham. Uh, players out, Meyer, uh, Buendia, Ings and Emmy Martinez, sorted. So, Thank you. And McGinn, of course. So mm. we move on to West Ham now. Let's do it, yeah. Um, speaking of right-backs, we've got to discuss mm. our right-back situation. Yeah. Ben jo so far was injured, Jen Johnson's come in. I've been unbelievable. You couldn't have asked for more. If you no. wanted to be nitpicky, and a sister too wouldn't have gone amiss. But clean sheet in every game he started so far this season... He's been very impressive, but now Vladimir Soufal is back. How fit is he for Sunday? Unsure. 
But what would you like to see in the right back situation? Uh, well, it's quite funny actually. I was looking at his stats today, and if you've read, um, I know you've read one of Ferguson's books, you, you'll know that there's a story in one of them about Ryan Giggs when he had played. Um, six or seven first team games and he went to Alec Ferguson and this is the time when players had club cars rather than being able to afford Ferraris when they were 11 right um so Giggs uh said to Alec Ferguson oh you know Gaffer I'm in the first team now can I have a, a club car now can I pay and which I think was they had a fleet of Mercedes can I have a Manchester United car and Fergie apparently said a first team player after whatever it was six or seven appearances I don't think so Ryan come back when you've played 50 times then we'll get you then we'll see about a car um Character building stuff, excellent. So I think, you know, Ryan Giggs had to drive his little Fiesta in. Yeah, brilliant. I love all that. Uh, but I looked, and I think that's, um, he's up in the mid 30s now. Um, not Ryan Giggs, obviously, he's about 800. But um, but Ben Johnson up in about in the 30s somewhere, first team appearances. And I think, you know, there's, there's a point now. We'll start, I think he is an, an established first team player. I don't mean guaranteed starter, but an established. First team player. I'm absolutely thrilled for him, to be honest with you. And then the other stats that are there are all these clean sheet stats this season. And I actually think he's undroppable. And then when you put it into it, what Stuart Pierce loved that Stuart Pierce was wheeled out for the press conference after Man City game because let's be I, I, the Moyes is Moyes is outstanding. Moyes knew people were going to be blowing smoke up his ass and hailing him as the Messiah. And Moyes, I was just thinking Moyes went, I just can't be dealing with this. I don't want to hear how brilliant I am. I'm going out to bed. Um, Pierce, you go and you go and deal with it. And Pierce was just going mad about um, Johnson. So I think Johnson's in, and I think that's right. Yeah, I think he, I, I agree with you. I think he is undroppable. And I think it was sending the wrong message as Sufal walks back into the starting 11. Listen, Sufal has been superb since he joined. There's no yeah. doubt about that. Does Sufal deserve not to start? No. Unfortunately, though, Ben Johnson's come in and been 8 out of 10 in every single game, and you just can't drop him. I think it would be far too harsh on Ben Johnson to drop him. It would almost be... I'd be extremely disappointed if the lineup comes out on Sunday and, and Sioux Falls starts. I would be disappointed. We've got the European game next Thursday as well, which provides a perfect opportunity for Moyes to put Sioux Fowl in there. So here, get your get your fitness back up. Here you go. Get out, run out then. And then I'll decide what I'm doing for the Liverpool game once I've seen you both play, kind of thing, and your Sioux Fowl's fitness is back up. But Ben Johnson just has to start. I said to you this morning. A couple of clean sheets with Ben Johnson's a coincidence, but it's not. It's seven games now. That's no longer a coincidence. That's concrete evidence that we are not conceding goals with Ben Johnson at right back. And he's had, every second game, he's a different centre back next to him. He's been superb. He deserves to start as far as I'm concerned. I'd like to see Ben Johnson retain his position on Sunday afternoon. Um, any other changes at the back? I mean, Ariola was impressive against Manchester City, but I think the other three pick himself with Zuma, Bonner, and Creswell, but the goalkeeper yeah. or. I just don't think you can ditch someone after a clean sheet, and Fabianski has also got two clean sheets. So I, I, I'm all for, as, as you like to say, punishing. Uh, you like to punish. It needs to be punished. Remember, did you say what you said to Chris about Chris Rodgers? He needs to be punished. He was having a bad run of form. He needs to be punished. Or Masuaku needs to be punished. Um, uh, so I don't want to see Fabianski punished. Um, but I would. I. I'd like to see Ariola in there, but but I get it. And I don't want to send out the wrong signal. And it does send out the wrong signal. If you're a goalkeeper and you keep clean sheets and you get dropped, um, I think it sends out the wrong signal as a goalkeeper and the defence, because actually, if Zuber and Ogbonna are allowing less shots at Fabianski, that's not really Fabianski's fault. Um, so, yeah, Fabianski stays in. The back four stays the same. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I think uh, Fabianski had a really good game, actually, against Tottenham, I think. Yeah, I still can't get over him coming out and catching that cross in the last minute. It's um, I was nervous for it. It was it was a very tense moment. It felt like the ball was going slow motion into the box. You could see Fabianski come in. Mm. Uh, it was, I was nervous. It was nail biting so much that Paul Scholes almost turned up at my house wanting a chomp on my feet as well. <laughs> he does, he loves it. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of the old uh, Man United player thing, uh, but, but when I saw Fabianski come in, I thought, oh no. It was lovely. It was like a, he soared through the air to catch that. Uh, but yeah, Fabianski staying in goal for me as well. And what it does do, it also says to Aviola in a way, like, I, you've had one really good game, mate, but that's not enough. That's not enough to get into my starting 11. We're better than that. You go out and do it against Ghent, go out and do it in the next cup game, whoever we have, and then we'll see. Um, it just keeps him on his toes a little bit. And the club at the minute are 
negotiating a contract with Fabianski as well. You know, the last mm. thing you want to do is annoy him <laughs> during the middle of a yeah. contract negotiation. But yeah, complete, complete same back five for me. Uh, I was trying to make field throw, Rice and Suchek sort of picks itself a little bit, but they're back to what they were last season. I think we're starting to see last oh, well. season's Rice and Suchek now. We are. We we absolutely are. There's um, there's I, I spoke actually. I spoke to a, a Tottenham fan I don't know, about half hour ago, and he Sorry was to saying, hear that. Well, he's fine. We do. They 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 existed in real life, um, and he actually runs my son's football team, and um, a lo lovely guy. And he was saying to me, we were talking about a match, and he was talking about uh, Hoiberg and Skip, and he said sort of going into the game, he said there's no way he would swap Hoiberg and Skip. Um, no, he would prefer Rice and Suchek. You know, he, we had the better midfield. He said you've got two really good midfielders. He was talking about how one of them goes and one of them stays. And it's just interesting. We know this anyway, but to get an outsider's perspective on it, uh, they're, they're, one, they're wonderful players. They're really, really good. And I think if you're setting up a team against West Ham, it must be, look at them, you must think that's a, that's a bit of a nuisance, really, to try and counteract that. Yeah, Villa, if Villa do play their formation with three at the back, which they shouldn't do, but if they did... This is where Villa's strength is, down the middle of the pitch. You'd have Louise and there with McGinn and then Boo and Dia ahead of them. And the space for West Ham would be at wide. But, obviously, out of possession, the emphasis is on Rice and Suchek to win that battle in there against what is a very good centre midfield for Aston Villa. But I do think we're seeing them... I think Rice has got better since last season. I think as a partnership, they are back to what they were last season. You know, Boyce spoke about Suchek's role, in particular, following the Brentford game. And he's obviously gone away and addressed it because we've not had yes. the same issue again. And it's working. It just really is. And, you know, we've got a deck of Rice starting on Sunday, not being involved last night. But Rice is a player that, weirdly, will get a confidence boost out of us beating Man City in the Cup without being involved in the game. Yeah. Rice is a type of player that I think, ah, love that, boys. Come on, let's get into Villa on Sunday. Mikel Antonio up front, though, rested as well. I think it's sort of beast mode, Antonio, waiting for us. Yeah, uh, this is not going to be um, particularly healthy for, for Aston Villa in that for Mings. sense. For, for Mings. Yeah, well, Mings will be able to handle him. All right, I'm sure. No, no I mean, he won't. it doesn't really matter who it is. Uh, he's going to cause trouble for, I guess, almost any. I can't think of too, too many. I mean, it's without seeing him against Diaz, we're not going to know. Um Van Dyke, I mean, there ain't many, are there? Um, I think Antonio's getting the best out of, um, is getting the better out of a lot of them. And, you know, if what it says is true, I love this, that he said to Romero after he dumped him down, you need to get on the weights, mate. Love that so much, so much, I really do. Um, we've seen him dismantle people, people like Connor Cody, it's just more than you can... Um, Poor Connor Cody. I just always use him as an example because he's the one I remember. But he just dismantles centre backs, doesn't he? Really. So yeah, Antonio back is is massive for West Ham. Yeah, but, uh, to see his progress. This is one game actually in the preview you could talk about Antonio's progress because a couple of years ago I'd have bit your arm off to swap Antonio and Ings. Not necessarily get rid of Antonio and bring it down the ends, but have Ings up front and Antonio elsewhere in the team. As I would have bit your arm off for it to have Ings leading the, the attack at West Ham. But you were to almost like blur out Mikel Antonio over the last 18 months and show someone the goals he's scoring and say that was Danny Ings that scored. They didn't believe you. He's been scoring traditional number nine goals. Danny Ings, poacher-type goals as well. He's been superb, Antonio. And a year and a half ago, Ings was in the England squad or on the fringes of the England squad. And since then, it's completely topsy-turvy, you know, He's only got three goals this season, Danny Ings. And Mikhail Antonio's goal and assist this season is just a ridiculous record as well. He's completely rested up for Sunday. Really looking forward to seeing playing. Now, the attacking trio, we, we're, I think we're both happy with Jared Bowen in there. Bowen, oh, yeah. still one of the first names on the team sheet. Yes. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, and I wouldn't change any of them, to, to be honest. I'm just waiting for them to, to click back into gear, really, Gio. I really am. I, I think there's... I think we've had a few quiet games from from the front players, which is um, you find it hasn't really cost us really because we've we've had the at the um, the corners and the set plays, which is fine. Um, but the, all the players are too good. Bowen, Antonio, Ben Rama, Fornells, they're all too good to stay all collectively quiet for any sort of run of games. There's goals. There's goals in in them their hills, mate. I tell you. I'd like to see a tweak. 
Um, I'd like to see Ben Rama back on the left and Fernandes into the middle. Um, some games it suits Ben Rama being in the number 10 role and Fernandes on the left because of Fernandes' work rate coming back in Ben Rama. He's in the centre of the pitch, you know, but I do think it's too congested for him in there sometimes. I'm not really... I feel Ben Rama's more dangerous when he's got an immediate opponent, whether it be Matty Cash or, or someone else. He can go one on one with him. He can take them on in the middle of the pitch. You can't really do that. There's no space. You try and get past the defensive midfielder, and by the time you've done that, there's someone else there, whether it's a centre back or whatever. In particular, if Aston Villa stick with a three at the back, they're going to have three centre backs marking Mikel Antonio. They have an adequate man to step out of defence and close down that space that Ben Rama would like to drift into. Uh, so I would like to see him back out on the left. That position where he shined in at Brentford, which made us buy him, that one, so, get back so, at there. So. The, the Ollie Watkins position. Yeah, the old Ollie Watkins position. The Ollie Watkins position on Sunday. I'm telling you, Dean Smith will switch it up. I've got a feeling. he's. I did the opposition preview for patrons earlier. And then um, normally I do it. Normally I drag them in, don't I? I take the goalie in first, then the back mm. line. I started differently. I put up their team from last Sunday and I said, no, 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 it's not going to be this this Sunday. Dean Smith's changed it. I'm convinced he's going to go to four at the back and I think Watkins might move out to the ring. But for West Ham, I want to see Fernandes back in the middle because I felt in the first half against Spurs, Skip and Hoiberg had far too much room. Now, a statistic came out after the game, which that surprised me, but... The other 14, it's a really good Twitter account. They focus on the non-Sky Sports 6 of the Premier League, right? So Tottenham, Arsenal and the teams that are usually in Champions League, out. The other 14. And they, they bring out these tables. every uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they bring out these tables. Who had the most shots? Which player created the most chances? Da, 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 da. And they brought one out during the week. The most presses by the other 14. Number one, Saeed Ben Rama. The other three, Antonio... Boring and for now, all in the top six. West Ham had Amazing. four of the top Amazing. six. Players. I have to confess, did not expect that from Saeed Ben Rama watching the game. I didn't feel he was closing Tottenham centre midfield down enough. Now, what that stat does, which I like my numbers, but that just says he got close to them. It doesn't actually yeah. say that he'd done a tackle or anything, no, no, he's no, got absolutely. close to them. Yeah. I think Fernals is better in the middle of the pitch than Ben Rama, and I think Ben Rama's better at wide than Fernals. So yeah. I would like to see them swapped uh, for this one. That's the only tweak I'd like to see. Um, so that's our that's the team myself and Gorns would like to see it's the same team surprisingly it sort of picks itself now a little bit has the fear factor gone Gonzo um, normally when we play Man United we'll say oh, we don't fear them anymore they're not the team they used to be but has the fear factor gone from just everyone because we, because of the foreign West Ham we're in we just don't fear anyone now it's like whoever it is bring it on we'll deal with you that depends who you are. We've all got our little separate ones, haven't we? Really, <laughs> I've got an irrational fear of Brighton. Um, not the not the not the seaside <laughs> town. I've got nothing against donuts and sandcastles. Actually, no sandcastles or stones and pebbles. Whatever. I've got that. You know, I've got nothing against. I was going to say snowboarding. I don't think it's that cold. You know what I'm saying. I've got nothing against the seaside um, at all. But I just think that old Potter is um, old Harry Potter. There is has made a, a magical team certainly. Um, so they worry me. I'm not without my little. Little concerns when we face certain teams. Um, however, this wouldn't be one of them. Uh, Dean Smith is really going to have to change something for this game because if he goes in like he has, I will tell you now, it, it is that team is tailor made for West Ham under David Moyes, and, and I don't say that just to. I don't always say that. I was worried about Everton, wasn't I? I said, this could be dodgy because you've got two teams that don't want to attack each other. You know, styles make fights and all the rest of it. Well, um, you've got a slugger and you've got someone who's going to jab in this one. And um, and they need to be really bloody careful. So they need to change something. Otherwise, they will find that we counter-attack them really, really quickly while they're tapping the ball around. And they could find themselves two goals down really quickly if they're not careful. Yeah, I don't fear anyone now. It's gone. We play Liverpool soon. We go to the Etihad in a month. I'm not that bothered. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Bring it on. We've got the cup draw on Saturday. I'm not bothered. Chelsea and Liverpool are still in there. Whoever, I'm not that fussed as to who we draw anymore. This team is so good. And we execute the tactics so good as well. I'm just, I'm just confident going into every game now. It's hard not to be, but not only am I confident, mine is the Brentford game. I was worried about that one, but I think I was justified. I got beat. You said, I, yeah, you did say. You did say. Um, but now I'm, 
I'm confident going into games, but I'm comfortable being confident. And that's what's new to me. Normally, I'm like, I get confident. I get scared that I'm confident. It's Paul Scholes at my door to, to bite my toenails because I'm nervous about being confident. <laughs> but, but now I'm confident. You sometimes get the comments, say, whoa, 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 don't jinx it. We'll probably get it today. Whoa, whoa, don't slag off Dean Smith. You know what's going to happen now? Masterclass with Dean Smith. It's still not going to happen. Hmm. Dean Smith might try something different. We'll deal with it. We're all right. We're a good team. We'll deal with whatever Dean Smith's got. We are better I've, than I've them. not slagged off Dean Smith. I have, and I will again on Sunday. And if you slagged off Tyrone Mings, you're nasty, but nasty, a bit grumpy at the moment, I've got to say. No, because I've praised plenty of their players as well. It's not Tyrone Mings. I think Conce is a better defender. I think Antonio will destroy Tyrone Mings on Sunday. Destroy. I mean, destroy. Punish him. Punish, punish. He needs punish punishing. Him. He, quite frankly, he needs punishing. There he does go. need punishing. I'm not sure why. Probably because he always has the world's biggest piece of chewing gum in his mouth, Tyrone Mings. Have you noticed? Do you see the chewing gum? Or does it just... And do you know it's big? Because you go... No, it's really open as well. He's oh, is it? really oh, open. Okay. Yeah. On Sunday, the camera zooms in on Tyrone Mings. You won't unsee it now. He's always like... He's like Fergie and steroids with chewing gum. Is it? Tyrone Mings. While he's playing? Yeah, and it's like light blue as well. So I think it's like... Uh, air, air, air waves? Air waves? Air waves. Uh, it's like that hub, colour. Blue hubba bubba. It's probably blue hubba bubba. Do they want to sponsor us? I like saying that. Blue hubba bubba. Hubba bubba. Yeah. Hubba bubba. Um, anyway... <laughs> Uh, you're confident, yeah, massively, massively. That really you, confident. Yeah. No, really, really confident for this one. Yeah. Um, are you confident? Well, there you are. Yes. Um, because of David Moyes and because of David Smith. <laughs> oh, no, you, can, you can't let it go. <laughs> no, Villa side, <laughs> right? Villa side. When I what? Well, not Villa side. Dean Smith side. When I watched Villa on Sunday, uh, Friday against Arsenal. Arsenal were just running down the sides. They would just passed the full back and he would just run. There was no one out wide. They had their wing mat peg back. So the Arsenal's wide players were pinning their wing backs back into a back five. And nobody had the full backs because poor old McGinn and Louise is trying to run around in the middle of the pitch, but they can't get out. And if they go out, the ball comes into the middle of the park where they're supposed to be. It was just a shambles. Watkins was booked after 90 seconds. And you just thought, what is going on? What are you doing? Um it was just a disaster from them. And when I sat there watching it, knowing that we were playing them soon, I thought, I can't wait to play this lot. I think Creswell is going to get a hat-trick of assists just by running down the line and cross today. He's not even going to have to do anything difficult. He won't even need set pieces because he's going to have the freedom of Villa Park down that side. Um, we just, just, I'm just so that confident. We rested players at, against Man City, Rice, Ogbonna, Zuma, Antonio, Fabianski, you know, he's a goalie, but he's still rested. We had a yeah, lot of players yeah. rested. Uh, it's half our first 11 didn't play. It's just things at West Ham are just going fantastic at the minute. The momentum, not just results and performances, but off the pitch as well, the feel-good factor, it's just too much. Um, so, yes, I'm going into this game hugely confident. Can I get any final words you may have, as well as your score prediction, please? Oh, just looking forward to it, mate. Hope everybody that goes up there has a has a really good trip up there. Um, uh, apart from Dean Smith, obviously, who we we hope has a horrible day. Um, and um, gets his maybe forty five. Yeah, well, maybe Geo's hoping that that actually they, they walk into each other in in the tunnel. Dean Smith and Tyrone Mings have a clash of heads or something. Um, he, so he wishes nastiness on both. Um, I don't think we need to do that. I think actually the scoreline will inflict um, as much punishment on them as, as is necessary. Um, but I, I listen, I, I like Aston Villa. I really do. I, I do think they might well set their manager and then get it right because their players are too good. They're, so they're much worse teams than Aston Villa at the moment. They're, they're awful. They're shipping goals. They take too long to attack, I think, as well. They attack slowly um, with ball retention. Well, I mean, you couldn't. You couldn't make up a, a better recipe for West Ham on that one. Um, it's going to be, I think it could be heavy, actually. G, I think it might be 4 1. That's a big, big score prediction from you. You don't often go big. Um, no. that's, that's a bold score prediction from you. You know, I mean, you look at the results in 3 2 against Wolves. You could argue they're unlucky to concede two 90th minute goals because they were winning 2 1 going into stoppage time. Then they lost 3 2. A massive deflection for the winner as well. That's 
a worrying thing that you were 2 one up with two minutes to go and you couldn't see the game out. And then you conceded the equaliser and continued to collapse one minute left on the clock. It's it's concerning things. It doesn't feel right. When I watch Aston Villa, it just doesn't feel right at the minute. Whereas if you watch West Ham, everything is going right. I think that will continue on Sunday. And I agree with you. I think they're a good club. Fantastic players there. I just don't think they're getting the best out of them at the minute. And I think that's going to continue on Sunday. Whereas... We are getting the best out of our players. There's players playing above probably their ability, if that makes sense. I'm going to go for Aston Villa nil. West Ham three. I'm going to go for a big win as well. I'm going to go for a big one. Anyway, uh, 4.30 kickoff on Sunday, which means at 3.25, 25 past three, you can join us here on Hammers Chance. We start our build-up to the game with the lineups coming out. Have a little look and see what... Villa's going to do as well as West Ham, although we've told you what they're going to That will be the West Ham team, which we've just discussed. Yeah. Um, again, we'll be interacting with the live chat, putting a little bet on, hopefully, when they, when you guys some money. Charlie had the watch on, and myself and Gonzo have the, the match review as well. Hammers Chat, your one stop shop for your West Ham match. Day. Gonzo, I'll see you on Sunday. Look forward to it. If you enjoyed this period, drop a like on the subscribe to your channel, download that one football app. I'll see you on Sunday. <laughs>